So I had a bunch of vlog footage and I didn't know what to do with it. So let's just make a little everything vlog. So this spring hit me with some lousy weather and a really long lull where not a whole lot was happening. And this time I couldn't blame it on uh, preparing for a big solo show like I did last year. I also suffered a minor, sudden, unfortunate loss. This camera is borked in a big way. It's not that I use it that much anymore, it's not that great, but I do carry it with me. So if I wanted to look at a bird from far away, I will use this just for the zoom. <laughs> and now it doesn't work. And I'm sad. This thing is so cool, look at it. However, during this time, somebody did buy one of my OG paintings that I've had for a very long time. So appreciation shout out to Jill for adopting this painting and not even in the sense like oh thank you for taking this old painting like no it's like literally the opposite this is one of my favorite paintings and I'm always surprised whenever I come across it in my book because it's such an OG painting like I used to do butterflies all the time like that was my thing I haven't done butterflies in such a long time and I think the reason is because Man, I got so sick of trying to draw things that are supposed to be symmetrical and not being able to do it. <laughs> the thing is, I think I used to sell more original art more like regularly than this. And I'm not sure if it's something that I'm doing because everything's either been kind of like a commission or for a gallery show. Because I think a lot of my original Etsy traffic back in the day was from YouTube and I've just been really lost as to what to do with my channel. Because I've always just been making whatever I want to be making and I suspect that YouTube is just kind of like over it. <laughs> and I think video in particular is just not my strongest creative outlet. And so fewer people are just kind of stumbling across my art these days. This long lull also includes commissions, so when even that is taking a rest, uh, what kinds of things should I be doing? So I ended up spending most of April focusing on the social aspect of marketing. I usually try to do a weekend market, so I was making new items to freshen up my display. And I'm not sure if I showed these yet or not, but I have made ones that are like little ghosts in tiny bottles. And my wild satellite art show last year, I was invited to do a little encore at a local library. And I was really stressed out about the logistics of setting it up because, you know, like I don't have a car and the buses are really crowded. I pretty much just took a handful of the larger paintings I have that I couldn't really sell online and ship anyway. And so I got them packed in a little sandwich. I took the big ones not just because of that, but also because they're technically, ironically, the lightest because they don't have glass. There's only one glass framed one in there. So I'm going to have to learn how to use a chain wall gallery. I have to attach labels and so I've been sort of like staple gunning them to the back but like the big paintings I don't want to put the labels on because they're just going to get like all smushed up and bent in transit but I found these I've had these little thumbtacks since I was a child hated them but I guess for some reason I kept them forever because then I can just put the label on the back punch one of these through and then they'll just be in there. I can't believe you guys decided to be useful one day. Amazing. So setting up the library was really awkward because uh, there were so many people studying. <laughs> and here we were trying to unpack all of the artwork without rustling the paper too loudly. I'd also never hung artwork on chains before, and it was a struggle to get the paintings to lay straight. The smaller the painting was, the worse it leaned. So luckily I came prepared with some fishing lines that I could ditch the chain entirely. So some of them kind of look like they're floating. <laughs> so even though I was prepared enough to bring fishing line and tape, I was not prepared enough to bring business cards. Whoops. But John had four in his pocket, so that was good enough for today. Uh, 
Another thing I did was make another sketchbook um, because I found a pack of this really thin calligraphy paper, except that it was a cream tone. I love messing with unusual papers, except that it would probably limit me to some very specific media. And so I had to do a quick test of different media on the calligraphy paper to see which one looked best. It looks like the ink pens are more interesting, which makes sense. It's calligraphy paper. I love the way that it smoothly transfers to the other side, which means no awkward and crinkly backs of pages to fill up. So of course I bound some into a new little sketchbook kind of thing. It's a Cheeto sketchbook in the rain. Uh, I use a weird, almost like a Coptic binding thing that I just, I was just kind of winging it. <laughs> I was lazy with this one. Um, and I was just using uh, sketches from a sketchbook that I recently took apart. Which is why I'm kind of like, why did I make this? <laughs> because I have so many sketchbooks or art journals or whatever. And I try not to fill them up too fast because I fill them up and then I don't like them that much. And I don't want to keep them and then I tear them apart. And then, you know, I use, I use them to make new things like this. I really like this cover. I have this one that is not finished yet. I have this one that I made with the Stonehenge, so it's really thick paper. So I only really use that sparingly. I'm not really into thick papers right now. It's like really good for watercolor stuff, really. I have this one, which is super thin papers that I use for almost everything. I have this one that I forgot even existed because it's literally just like leaf prints and they're too pretty to use so i don't know i might turn that into like a found poetry art journal thing i have this thing and i originally wanted to devote this to dreamscapes i have this which is the art journal i have this one that my mother-in-law gave to me and i have this a brand new one that i just got the montmart one because this one has my favorite paper ever in it for sketchbooking because it's almost like watercolor paper but not quite. Look at these. As far as I know these are the ones that I have going on. It's just gonna keep doing this. I was also nervous about tabling at a proper craft fair in April. Nervous because the show's marketing is not that great and the weather has been really rainy every weekend and because craft fairs cost more and combined with like the lull in art income in general there was just so much more pressure to do well in sales to pay for the table and make it worth it. New prints. So I'm going to be trying out this guy. I had trouble with the sky because when I switch it to CMYK that the sky turns like a weird gray blue, but eh. apparently I used a blue that is not printable. Are you okay? <laughs> My cat just fell down. And the other one is this duck overlooking this whole domain. And the other ones are just reprints that I've been running out of. So like I got owl, stone, forest one, ran out of those. I always want to have at least like one crow picture because everybody likes crow stuff. Ephemera packs I make sometimes when I print a lot of things and they don't go well. Destroyed one of my art journals because I didn't really like it. Pages that I did like that I might like take with me and sell them as like little like sketches for like 20 bucks or something I don't know I really like all of these grasshoppers so in the process I ended up oh here's a bee <laughs> in the process I ended up with a ton of scraps and what's wild is like last Sunday was the slowest day at the flea market I've ever seen. So I was practicing fire because I don't know if I know how to draw fire. So that's what I did the whole day. <laughs> Other artist there said that she was looking forward to like having a portrait to draw off where we would sit there and look at each other and draw each other's portrait just in like in person right there. It was like so nerve wracking. And all the other vendors were like gathering around to watch us like we were doing a competitive performance or something and they were like judging. But it was so, it was so fun. Like it made the day really, really fun. I think it would have been really sad and boring if, if that didn't happen.
Finally, April was for the Just Time uh, time-themed juried exhibition, and there's so many people contributing, and there were lots of pieces made with clock parts, uh, and so my moving piece won third place. I'm really sad to have missed the artist reception for the craft fair because apparently it was a really good reception. I hope I can give you a little tour of the art show. So when art biz is just really quiet and life is looking a little duller on the edges, it seems like what has had the most positive effect on mental health has been the social aspect of it. Because that's the kind of thing that I was missing for so many years, is just feeling like a stranger in my own community because nobody knows me here. I'm not very good at it, but doing things like in real life, those things are certainly a kind of marketing, but it's f been feeling a lot less like hustle culture and more like just playing around and having fun. Because otherwise it like it's really easy to get stuck in production mode, but it feels good to be able to actually show it off sometimes. I love how art has created and enriched friendships and we can go to an art show here and it'll give us something to talk about and bond over. So that's pretty much all the stuff that I did in March and April. If you like these kind of vlog videos, I have a whole vlog playlist. Um, and let me know in the comments if there's something else that you prefer <laughs> as I try to figure out what to do with this art channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.